Hello everyone, welcome uh, to the session. We are going to talk about how we can build a SaaS application. So SaaS application means software as a service. And in this session, we're going to start our process. So the process uh, of building a SaaS application will start first by picking um, the style that we are going to work on. And because we are on the, the AGS Live, we are certainly going to use JavaScript. And JavaScript means that we are going to work with a stack which is going to be Technically, the main stack. So main stack represents MongoDB, uh, Node.js, Express.js, and JavaScript. MongoDB certainly and obviously will be uh, our database choice. Node.js will be uh, the Node.js platform. And Express.js and AngularJS are just two dependencies that we are going to incorporate in our process. So Express.js is, is simply a... Um, a JavaScript framework is going to handle our HTTP requests. Send from post, get uh, options, and everything beyond. Um, AngularJS, we're going to handle our uh, front end uh, process. So everything that's going to happen over our front end, we're certainly going to be handled using AngularJS. So in order to start any kind of process, we're going to certainly go to install some dependencies. And to do so, simply go to your development um, development uh, directory uh, so in my case i'm going to um, create one so i'm kadir uh, if you are wondering about my uh, development machines i'm simply going uh, running windows for the moment windows and using cnder so c and d e r as my uh, linux like um, terminal for windows which well, is going to give me some kind of functionalities and some kind of uh, really neat um, helpers from LS to touch and everything that uh, we usually have over a Mac or Linux. So let's start by creating my uh, working directory. So I'm Kadir. So I'll call my demos, then CD to demos and create uh, my SaaS application. So uh, I'm Kadir. Mm. SAS, then navigate to it. Now, in order to start some kind of application, usually we use npm, so not uh, JS package manager. Uh, but not everyone uh, agreed on the, that representation or that abbreviation because they always come up with this weird naming for it. So npms obviously were certainly going to mean nothing. Now, in order to install my dependencies, I'm going to use Yarn, and Yarn is this new cool kit that we're going to let me install my dependencies in a parallel way. So let's do it. So simply add or use Yarn, Yarn, and you can install Yarn using uh, npm install dash g Yarn. Uh, then simply launch it or your terminal using the following Yarn add express and AngularJS. Also, I'm going to use Mongoose. So Mongoose will be my Node.js or my uh, MongoDB ORM. It will going to let me interact with my uh, MongoDB database in a schema-based way. So we're going to make my life much, much easier. Then I'm going to install also body parser so the body parser will be uh, or we're going to have or let me uh, interact with any kind of forms any kind of uh, data that i usually send via a put or a post request and also to uh, just to mention this uh, body the body parser can't handle the multi-part five functionalities so in order to do so we're going to reach that uh, step uh, in the future, but in order to do so, you need to incorporate another set or another module so we can have such functionalities. Then I'm going to install Morgan. And Morgan is simply my HTTP uh, or my HTTP request log. Okay, now let's hit install. And in order to uh, make use of the video, uh, editing process, I'm going simply to uh, speed the things up. Now, after everything is done, let's check my uh, 
project using Atom. So we are going to work with Atom code editor in this project. So simply in your uh, in your terminal, hit the Atom with a space and then dot. We're going to launch Atom in this particular uh, directory and hit enter. Now, uh, I got my Atom uh, open. So now let's uh, see uh, the component. So the YARN package manager uh, it starts some kind of dependencies and we do have them in the node modules uh, directory. So the package JSON file have simply the, uh, the file or the dependencies that I have already installed. But uh, it, there is some kind of missing part and which will going to cause us uh, some kind of problems when we are going to launch our application. So in order to uh, oversee everything, I'm going to add them in here. So name, we're going to be my my application name. Then I need to introduce also the main file. So th the main uh, field here is going to represent the main file that my application will depend on when I'm going to launch my application. So it's going to be api.js. So now you might wonder what is the api.js file. I was simply going to add it, api.js. Okay, so far so good and everything works just fine. Now let's launch our application and do a quit test or a hello world test. In order to do so, and like I explained before, we're going to use Express for our needs and Express we're going to have or we're going to let him handle all my HTTP requests. So in order to do so, we need to initiate an Express server. So in order to do so, we're going to use the following command. So constant, const, because I'm going to also to incorporate some kind of ESX functionalities. So const is one of them, but it won't work unless we do some strict mode, unless we are in the street. So I'm going to require express then launch it because it's so it's uh, imagined it as a function. So in order to uh, have all the functionalities that the express module have, we need to execute the module itself. Then going to do the following. I'm going to listen or to listen to a port. So in order to initiate my application, I need to listen on a port. Then I'm going to use the fat arrow functions and it's a new uh, functionality is ported over my ES6, um, X6 implementation. So simply I'm going to use console or CDOG listening over port 3000. So whenever I start listening to my port 3000, I will go simply going to uh, console a message and it's not a string over here. So yeah. Now let's simply listen to or introduce a lot. Introducing a lot. So in order to introduce any kind of routes over Express, I need to uh, now to do the following. So app.get, so like I explained, express let me uh, handle routes. So routes are going to be handled via methods. And uh, like we all know, HTTP have various methods from get, post, put, options, etc., etc. Now let's introduce a route. So it's going to be the root route. Then whenever I got this call or whenever uh, the server gets any kind of routes to my root out, I'm simply going to uh, send back a hello world message. Okay, now let's talk this through and talk about what's the request, the, uh, this request and the result object mean. So the request and the result object are going to be introduced in compile time uh, whenever I got a request to this route. So express, we're going simply to inject the request and the result file to my request or to my demand. And the request is simply going to be my request. So 
the request that I have initiated. And the result, we're simply going to be the result object that I want to send back or any kind of uh, the main object that have many kind of uh, sub object or sub function that we're going to let me interact with my user. So now let me sim simply going to do the following result dot status. The status we're going to be deprecated in the express file. So we are going to use it just for fun and just for one and then going to introduce two fields. The first one will be success with true, if true, and a message. And hello world. So you might wonder why I'm using uh, JSON instead of any kind of other function because we also do the send function. Because we are building a SAS, we are simply going to build a multi tier, uh, we are going to work in a multi tier architecture. So, the multi tier architecture means that we don't send directly files, but we will send the file or send data as JSON or as XML uh, to my middle tier, which is going to be represented in the AngularJS uh, tier. So, AngularJS is going to live the middle tier and the presentation tier. And for me, it's much easier for me to handle um, what we call um, JSON, uh, uh, JSON instead of any kind of um, methods or plain text. Okay, so it's just for simplicity. But we're going to uh, stop in this far. So whenever my demo got accepted or my demo going to work, I was going to stop it for the moment so we can. Uh, uh, observe or absorb everything that we went through. Okay, now let's simply hit save and go back to my terminal and next the following. So, nodmon API. So, nodmon is simply an OGS console application which let me uh, relaunch my application without interfering. So, we are certainly going to work through my uh, my file here or any kind of new files that we are going to introduce. So uh, before um, or while doing so, my server we're going to use top because I'm in development mode, but I don't want to relaunch it again and again and again while doing so. Uh, so instead I'm using Nodmo in order to make my uh, relaunching the application process much easier. Again, we do have many other modules that do just the trick, but for me, as for simplicity uh, needs, I was simply going to incorporate not mine. Okay, now let's hit enter, and my files now got um, uh, launched or executed, and we are going to listen on port 3000. Now, because we are in dev mode, I'm simply going to work with Postman, and Postman is simply my HTTP. Uh, proxy somehow, somehow a proxy that's going to let me interfere with my HTTP in um, API in a cool way. So now uh, let's go back and remember that I have introduced a GET request. So I need to introduce a GET request and go to my local host. So I'm going to listen over my local host on port 3000 with uh, the route of slash or the root. Out. Okay, so localhost, then simply hit send. Now I got the following I got the success object and the hello world object from my backend or from my uh, server. Uh, we're going to hear more and more about this kind of uh, uh, naming backend, made it here, front end in the future. So uh, make sure to feel a bit comfortable with that. Okay. Now, you might wonder why we didn't start body parser and Morgan. Uh, let, let's make use of, um, of body parser and let's make use of Morgan. So let's make use of Morgan for the moment. We const Morgan acquire Morgan. So in order to use any kind of files in the Node.js world, 
we need to include it first. Okay, now let's use following up use Morgan. Dev mode. Okay. So let's test it. And again, we do have the pull all uh, my uh, server in edge itself using the node one. And go to request again. So if you see here, we successfully incorporated Morgan. So again, I got a get request to my port. Uh, the root port, so the slash one, and I got a 200 response with also a, a execution time. So my request got treated in 4.8 milliseconds. So I guess that's good, but we can do more in order to make it faster. But that's it. So we successfully incorporate um, Morgan. So for instance, let's go to my B to API slash login. I don't have such route, so I'm going to expect a 404, um, a 404 uh, response. For and yeah, we don't have any kind of routes that indicate the presence of a get request to the pull or to the route API slash login. So that's that's for therefore I got a 404 message. So as simple as that. Things I hope things start to make sense uh, for the moment. I guess that was it for today. Thank you very much for watching, and I guess I will catch up with you in the next one. Peace.